sponsored programs on this station are strictly those of the program hosts, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of Beasley Broadcast Group, this station, its staff, other advertisers, or agencies. It's your hump day. Hump day, yeah! High noon. Hot Atlanta radio show for the entrepreneurs to the small business owners and nonprofit organizations hang out for their opportunity to be on the ledge. Now, let's welcome your host, Carl Callender. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to On the Ledge. I'm glad that you came on board. Uh, we have part two today. We have our guest here, Alizia Ellis, right here in the house with his book called Beyond Zen. And Zen is spelled with an X, X-E-N. But before we get started today, I want to let you know, I want to talk a little bit about the election here in Georgia. They already started, everybody. (laughs) Cheating is going on already. I just want to let you know that. Vote early, people. Vote early. Don't wait until November 6th. Get out and vote early. Because right now they're doing everything they can to purge your votes. Everything they can. Especially, I'm going to put this out there, especially in Gwinnett County. Gwinnett County is a big hot topic right now as far as how many absentee votes are being held up because of some reason. It, it's Something's not matching for some reason. So we, are, we all know what's going on. And one more thing before we get started with our guest is that uh, tomorrow there's an event being held by the Gwinnett Chapter NAACP for our very first ever African-American judge in the county of Gwinnett, and her name is uh, State Judge, Court Judge, Rhonda Coven Leary. Yes, indeed, and I'm so happy to be uh, proud to be able to read her bio tomorrow. So this is going to be at Five Fork Trickham's Library right there in Gwinnett County, and this event is from 6.30 to 7.30, so please come out. And she's also going to break down and and lay some knowledge about the court system. And giving you the ABCs and the one, two, three, so you know what's going on, okay? All right. Mr. Ellis, thank you, sir, for coming in. How you doing? I'm doing wonderful, Brother Carl. Um, just blessed to be here, uh, to be in the house. Um, for all of your listeners, uh, it's an honor it's um, a- to do this follow-up segment uh with Brother Carl, uh, discussing this uh, very necessary work that I've uh, penned. Um, the uh, title of the book is Beyond Zen, uh, X-E-N, which is short for xenophobia. And uh, for you all that are not familiar with xenophobia, uh, xenophobia is uh, it's a fear. Uh, it's a fear of foreigners. It's a fear of the unknown, the unlike. Um, and, um, it, uh, it also is a fear of enemies, adversaries, uh, friends and loved ones, unfortunately. Um, the, 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 the challenge that we all face, um, all people, uh, have the same needs, wants and desires. And, um, the challenge is, is that. Uh, that fear uh, creates a, a, a situation of of, uh, of aggression, of neediness, of uh, wrestling and, and, and jockeying for resources, uh, i.e. jobs, better schools, uh, better housing. Um, and most of us, we just fail to understand that, you know, In the grand scheme of things, uh, there's enough resources, housing, jobs for everyone. Um, We just have never learned to share the wealth. Mm. Um, Mm. We live in a very uh, broken world. Um, You know, we're all broken and consumed with uh, various fears, uh, but none of those fears are are more than those that we relate to others. And we exact our fears out on others uh, whom we view as a threat. And that that's what xenophobic fears are. I like how you put that. You're, you're really breaking it down for, for the listeners here. Um, I want you to... 
Last week was very good. Um, uh, the reviews, as far as people giving me a call, my phone was blowing up. Hey, we got a guy. We have to have this gentleman back on. So I kind of sort of. No, nah, I'm not going to say that. We're going to let. We're going to start back where we left off uh, last week. So, um, can I say something really quick? Go ahead. I have my son here. Go ahead. What hey, guys. Got? This is Bryce. Um, I met Mr. Alizaya working at Crunch Fitness right before I quit. And um, it was just insane. He walked in, seemed like a normal guy, said, hello, sir, how are you? But something about it just made us gravitate to each other so much that we just continued to talk. And he said, straight up, I see that your parents raised you well because um, just the way you carry yourself and how you treat people. And it, it took me a while to understand exactly what he was saying, but it seems like no matter what, if um, if someone's showing hatred towards you or something, just turn the other cheek because that hurts them more than them getting a reaction out of you. And uh, that I think that's another part of xenophobia is just that if you don't give them a re- the reaction or... Um, the the response to the stimuli of hatred, they'll eventually understand that what they are showing or what they're displaying is powerless. You give it all, you give them all the power when you give them a response. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much, Mr. Alexander, for teaching that to me. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. <laughs> all, right. all right, thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, he's right. You know, sometimes we get in positions where um, we want to react uh, to someone that's showing. Um, dislike towards us or they could be having a bad day and they want to lash out um, but they don't know how to release that uh, negative energy so uh, let's let's talk a little bit further about that go ahead mr. Ellis well you know um, part of that 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 challenge uh, brother call is that um, this country um, is built um, off of false premises. Mm. There's a uh, conflict of dissonance, which means that, you know, uh, America's stated beliefs or public stance has never reflected her behavior or private self. And its, uh, its citizens follow suit. So we can we subscribe to that that medium and and therein lies the problem because people ask me all the time um nothing's going to change do you think anything is ever going to change and that's what they're speaking to mm. how can you hold the citizens responsible for um for brotherly love and, and brotherhood when the country is built on a lie. Right. Therein lies the problem. There's the problem. And so I think the biggest challenge that I've seen in this country and, and globally is that uh, there's an arrogance um, of not feeling the need to repent. That's the biggest problem with this country. Wow. We have never taken the courage to uh, repent for our sins. And until we do that, this country will remain broken. Mm. (laughs) I feel like with that, we need more, we need more leaders with the, um, the right type of self-assessment type of plan to like know when they're wrong and to have that type of pride that they can break to be like yo this is my fault i will put the blame on myself and i will work as hard as i can to fix it it seems like everyone's pointing fingers so i agree with you with that arrogance and everything everyone's pointing fingers they think that their their poop doesn't stink or anything and they just can do whatever they want but whenever somebody else does something wrong they want to point it out so quick and that's another part of xenophobia, I think. think. Yeah, good, good, good. Let's do this. Let's do this. We're going to have to take a break real quick, and we're going to come back. And um, we're going to slide these gloves off a little bit. We, we, we're we about to rattle some cages here. I want to rattle cages today. Thank you for joining. Hey, we're about to take a break, and we'll be right back. 
If you've been hurt or injured in a car or truck wreck at no fault of your own, you need Lady Justice. If you've been charged with a crime and you need the best defense attorney in Georgia, you need Lady Justice. Kate's Law Firm is the name to call when you need Lady Justice on your case, working to get you the best results. When you need Lady Justice on your side, call Kate's Law Firm, 770-477-2070. That's 770-477-2070. Do you have a lawyer? Do you have legal representation that covers all 15 areas of law? That includes... Super finance, traffic, real estate, estate planning, family law, landlord, tenant, collection, personal injury, and immigration, to name a few. Can they assist and help prepare your will right from your smartphone by downloading an app? Will they review contracts before you sign them without a retainer fee? If your answer is no and want affordable, unlimited access to a good law firm that represents you, your family, and your business, then you should contact Carl Callender at 470-322-5578. That's 470-322-5578. Call today. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to On the Ledge. We're here with Mr. Ellis with the book Beyond Zen and as X-E-N and, and, and my, my guest here. My co-host, <laughs> my son Bryce. Hey uh, let's let's talk a little bit further about the United States and and, and what's going on today and and let's let's talk about maybe a solution. There is one, but no one wants to talk about that. Well, what do you think, Mr. Ellis? Well, I, you know, Carl, I, I the whole premise of this work is um, our solution is cultural unity. Um, cultural unity um, is is sharing of cultures and resources. It's uh, it's voluntary, uh, it's natural, and it's attainable for any nation. You hear us talking about diversity and inclusion. When you start with diversity, um, inclusion is part of the filling. They're not separate. No, they're not. And so therein lies the problem. Um, Diversity uh, doesn't work. It's nothing but 21st century, uh, non-legislated affirmative action. Okay. You hit me hard on that one. Okay. (laughs) And it's voluntary. You cannot expect... You're delusional uh, in expecting young kids who are segregated from what I call, we have a period in life. You probably have observed this. From the age of about zero to five years old, from birth to five, that's a period of racial tolerance. That's a period of racial tolerance. Mm-hmm. You go to the daycares, you see kids from all walks of life. You see kids from all walks of life. They play in together. They engage in with one another. There's no biases. At about age five, when they get to kindergarten, you start to see the separations. Mm -hmm. You start to see them noticing differences and calling each other out and calling each other names and all this other stuff. That's when the xenophobic life starts at age six. All the way up to about age 64 is a xenophobic life. All the way up to age 64? All the way up to age 64. And then what happens? At 65, we retire. We go into these assisted living communities, blah, blah, blah. And racial tolerance starts all over again. That's how we live. And people are delusional about admitting that. You're right. You call them out on it. You could see a person persecuting someone else for no reason. You could call them out on it, and they'll, and they'll swear down that that didn't happen. Oh, no, that's not what I was doing. I was, you know, you got it wrong. Um, that was not my intent. That's every day, all day. All, every day, all day. You know, and so when, when, when you talk about this diversity thing, 
these kids are separated um, from the age of about five. You bring them in the workplace at 22, 23, 24, fresh out of college, and you tell them, oh, well, we have a diverse culture, blah, 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 and everyone needs to get along. These companies are spending hundreds of millions of dollars on uh, 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 racial bias training, Correct. Uh, unconscious bias. Um, and then I'm talking to young employees, young millennials that's working at Coca-Cola and, 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 and Google and these places, and they're telling me, yeah, well, you know, we had two weeks of, of, of unconscious racial bias training, but how do they expect us to believe that when my boss walks past me every day and doesn't even look at me, let alone speak? So how do you expect me to accept that this is supposed to this is the way I'm supposed to act? That's the dissonance theory. It plays out in everything that we do. You hear people all the time, oh yeah, well, I believe, I believe, I believe. You know, we get caught up in religion. Oh, you know, if I'm a Catholic and you're a Jehovah Witness, we can't talk about religion. If I'm a Democrat and you're a Republican, we can't talk about politics. Well, you profess one thing, mm -hmm. but beliefs are null and void if they don't reflect behavior. Correct. That's where the conflict is. Our beliefs and our behavior is 360 degrees apart. Yes, it is. And so I challenge people to, um, to face those fears of indifference and to look at themselves in the mirror and don't be afraid of who you see. Because a change of heart is the beginning of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. I have penned a statement which I call the State of the Union. Okay. The real State of the Union. Okay. Um, and I think this will help the mindsets in the hearts of people in this country and globally. White America is inescapably entangled in a forced marriage to blacks, but have now become engaged to Hispanics. Divorce is too deadly, and to remarry is illegal. That's the State of the Union today. That was amazing. Can you do me a favor? Because <laughs> you know I'm going to ask you to repeat that. You're going to have to say that one more time. Yes, Please. sir. Please. The State of the Union, the real State of the Union, in this country, white America is inescapably entangled in a forced marriage to blacks, but have now become engaged to Hispanics. Divorce is too deadly, and to remarry is illegal. That's deep. That's deep. Oh, my goodness. That's deep. I hope, I hope uh, by you saying it twice, I hope they got, they written that down. I hope uh, so. And if you didn't, <laughs> if you didn't, you definitely need to get on my podcast when I read, when I load this up later on today, because that is the most powerful statement that I ever heard in, in some years. And um, on that is a great time to take another break. And when we come back, we're going to dig in a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper because, uh, once again, time is running short, so we're going to make this real quick. You're on the ledge, and we'll be right back. If you've been hurt or injured in a car or truck wreck at no fault of your own, you need Lady Justice. If you've been charged with a crime and you need the best defense attorney in Georgia, you need Lady Justice. Kate's Law Firm is the name to call when you need Lady Justice on your case working to get you the best results. When you need Lady Justice on your side, call Kate's Law Firm, 770-477-2070. That's 770-477-2070. Do you have a lawyer? 
Do you have legal representation that covers all 15 areas of law? That includes super finance, traffic, real estate, estate planning, family law, landlord, tenant, collection, personal injury, and immigration, to name a few. Can they assist and help prepare your will right from your smartphone by downloading an app? Will they review contracts before you sign them without a retainer fee? If your answer is no and want affordable, unlimited access to a good law firm that represents you, your family, and your business, then you should contact Carl Callender at 470-322-5578. That's 470-322-5578. Call today. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I had to pick my jaw up. Um, my mouth was wide open after that uh, after that uh, statement there that you just, the State of the Union there for the United States. Uh, that was amazing. Uh, we have 10 minutes left, so we, we, we're going to try to fit this all in, but I'm going to let you all know. There is going to be a part three. Yes, indeed. There's, there's too much. There's, there's so much more that we need to touch on and talk about. Uh, so I'm going to give it back to Mr. Ellis because he has a, definitely some more things to talk about here before we leave today. Go ahead, Mr. Ellis. Uh, yeah, um, I just want to, you know, help people to understand that, you know, um, we live in isolated silos of moral escape. Um, you know, I think Atlanta is probably one of the greatest places for um, for me to uh, elevate this work because when I started writing this book back, you know, uh, I finished the book in, in 2016, late 2016. Uh, Atlanta was the... Uh, the number two city uh, in the United States, uh, the, the number two most segregated city in the United States, and it was number three in um, income inequality. And since that time, uh, in 2018, Atlanta has become the number one city in the United States for income inequality. And people see all the growth around Atlanta, and you see bulldozers and cranes everywhere, and we growing and we created a million jobs and all this other stuff. 80% of all children in the city of Atlanta live in poverty. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that um, change needs to occur. There's too much wealth at the top that has not trickled down and created viable opportunities for our youth in this city. And, and, and so I feel that we can all make a difference. I don't care if you're a teacher, uh, a truck driver, uh, a mail carrier. You don't have to be an a entertainer. Or uh, I hear young ladies talking, and uh, Beyonce is going to pay for my college, and she's going to do this, and they're going to do that, and... We put all our hopes in celebrities and uh, what I call transitory gods. Um, we all have value. We all have special gifts and talents. None of us were created equal. And I know many of you all have, oh, all men are created. All men are not created equal. We, all, we have all uh, different talents, gifts to share with this world. And I challenge you all to do that. Um, uh the problem I'm having is that no one seems to denounce hatred and injustice uh, until it shows up at their front door. You know, we, we sit, we watch, we pray um, um, that that trouble doesn't come our way. Right. Try you know, but we comments. sympathize and we empathize. Oh, you know, it's a shame that, you know, that man got shot in the street and, and you know, it's just a shame. Well, you know, if you, the same people that you are paid to see a young person of color play ball, uh, but you call the police on that same kid who walks through your neighborhood at night. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. I always talk, I always talk about that, you know, stop looking for other people um, to give you something. You got all you have right there right. inside you. Stop right. looking for other people to give you handouts. I don't. I, I, 
And that has to do with um, um, self-esteem. That has to do with self-love. Yeah, it, uh, it does. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. I was going to say one thing. Um, everything comes with respect. Like you were saying, self-esteem, self-love, like that's self-respect too. And I feel like xenophobia starts from there too because a lot of people feel themselves as inferior anyway. So they try to throw other people down right? so that they can feel better about themselves. And it starts, like you were saying, Mr. Uh, Ellis, in school. <clears throat> started early. Well, I want to say seventh grade when I first came to Collins Hill. Oh, uh, yeah. Creekland Middle, man. Oh, that was rough. It was very rough. I didn't do it. When I tell you, I was the same good kid that I was in Duluth. But just because I was an African-American male, they were on me for everything. Yeah. <clears throat> I almost got paneled for literally nothing. It was insane. And then uh, it kind of carried on during the high school. And even after that. Right. Now, I, um, there's some people that I see um, that I used to see at Crunch. Mm -hmm. Now, if I see them in person now, they probably won't even look at me just because I don't work at Crunch anymore and they don't have to speak to me. Oh, it's like insane. that. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. Um, that's sad that that's we have the situation in, 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 in an, and it's right here at our, at our doorstep right here in Atlanta. And some of the stats that you just laid down there, I did not know. I did not know at all. So we only got about another two, three minutes left. Uh, I want you to let everybody know how they can get your book. Okay. Um, my book is available on Amazon. Um, and um, I invite you all to, um, you can actually preview the book free. I mean, you can go on Amazon. The book has a look inside feature, and you can actually read the first 15, 20 pages free. It takes you five, ten minutes to do that. I think the work kind of speaks for itself. Uh, every social, economic, political, and spiritual challenge we face today is captured in this book. Um, I've kind of penned it as a social atlas for daily healing. Um, there's a message in this book for everybody breathing. I don't care if you black, white, blue, or green. Um, one, of the, one of the things that, that, that we all um, need to understand is that as long as race matters, uh, there will always be confusion, delusion, and exclusion. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very Man, much. I'm going to let you know there. something. We did not get a chance to talk on that Willie Lynch doctrine. But we're going to do that. We, that that's going to be part three. We will. We're going to touch We're gonna touch on that next week. We will. And I appreciate you blessing the show today. And um, part three, um, we're going to make that next week. Okay. We're going to make that next Wednesday. Right. All right. And, and and thanks for having me and uh, all the listeners out there. I, I, I appreciate uh, uh, your support and um, be blessed. All right. All right, guys, that's it for today. We appreciate you tuning in. Next week is going to be just like this week. Fabulous. Thank you. You're on the ledge on a real 1100. Have a good day. And boom, there it is. Thank you for listening to On the Ledge with Carl Callender. Don't fall off. Be sure to come back next week. See you then. <laughs>